So, uh, so we're, we're in a series, I guess. It's, it's a year. We're in a year of transformation is what it is. So we're transforming. Uh, and the whole concept of that is how do we grow in Christ? And, and what's that look like in our hearts? What's that look like in our lives? What's that look like in our families? And everything we do as we mature, as we transform into something that he predestined us for. Like he created us with, with his image in us. Right? So we were born with his DNA in our body. Right? But a lot of us take forever to try to figure out what that is. And we think we got to earn it and all these other things. And that's not true whatsoever. Like he loves you. Oh man, he loves you. And he just wants to see you operating in the blueprint that he designed you in. So when he breathed life into you before you were in your mother's womb, he already had a pre-plan in his head that you were going to be phenomenal for the kingdom. Like he said, you're going to be a kingdom leader. You're going to be, you're going to be the biggest thing in the kingdom is coming through you. He designed you that way. And then he puts you here and then life takes over, right? And we get caught in all these things. So a lot of times people are always trying to, to, to get back into that predestined uh, flow of what he wants us to do. So that's what we've been talking about. That's why it's taken 17 weeks because we're all at different levels and that's good. Like you're going to have some people that are just starting off. You're going to have some people that have been doing this for 25 years and now they feel like they're just starting off because it's different. It's a different thought process. We got to change the way we think, right? We got to change the way we think. We, uh, oh man. So we, we fixing to have some fun with it. You, you guys cold in here? Yes. How about we thank Joe for being cold because we got new air conditioner running right now. That's pretty good, isn't it? Here's my thing. I'm sweating. So if you're freezing, that means you're going to stay awake. You know, it's blowing hard when I walk by and it hits the mic. Yeah, that's right. It's almost winter time. You're going to be liking me. What was that? Oh, that was Aaron back there. I was like, Holy Ghost speaking on the drums. <laughs> He's, I'm getting my Cajuns. You know, you got Cajuns in the house when they put jackets on. <laughs> Come on. There, I'll try to turn that down for you. Good stuff. <laughs> Everybody's freezing. I love it. Come on. You know, it's blowing hard. Look at, look at the Jesus flag. That's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right. So, so we've been in this thing, man. And, and here's the bad thing for us is we fail to understand how easy it is to actually transform. It's called surrender. Like, you, you know how much effort it takes? So if you were a... If you're in a battle, if you're in the military and you're in a battle, you know what effort it takes to surrender? Set my gun down and go like this. And I surrendered, right? So, so this, is, this is the concept in our head. If we're going to surrender to him, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Like, like you get to literally just surrender and say, have your way, man. Guide me. This is why we say, you know, we used to say where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. But that's changed up and now it's where... Where the, not the spirit is, or where, where the spirit is Lord, there is freedom. So we sang that song different. Because just because the spirit's present doesn't mean there's freedom in everybody. Does that make sense? But we've been singing for years where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. But no, when the Lord, right, is in you, when the spirit is Lord, when we make the spirit Lord, now there's freedom. Because he's going to guide you right where you're supposed to be for the moment you're supposed to be there. Does that make sense? All right, and that's where we have to tune in. So transforming means we're listening better, we're hearing better, we're walking in faith, we're just doing those things, and it's changing the world around us. It's changing our families, it's changing the atmosphere, it's changing our workplaces, it's changing our schools. It's just big, and that's what we're in the middle of, is transformation. And it, and it changes when you step out in faith, right? It changes when you step out in faith. So uh, we got to, I'm gonna share a little bit. Um, we get so caught up in the transformation in our life that sometimes we forget who transformed us. Sometimes we've been walking in this born again status for so long that we forget the one who got us here. Come on, I was 34 when I finally surrendered. So that was like two years ago. Okay. Yeah, a little bit different, right? It's just wisdom. That just, just happened overnight. 
But think about that. I was 34, and sometimes I forget to go all the way back and remember and be thankful for the one that pulled me out of my junk. Right? It is so easy to move on and not even think about that and always worried about what's next and never go back and say, thank you for what you've done. Like, thank you for getting me to where I am. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the more I go back and say, thank you, Lord, the more he just wants to pour out. It's like, he's a good, good father. We say that all the time. Dad's in the room, right? We know it. When your kids come and they're thankful for something, you want to give them more. Right? You just want to give them more because they're thankful. But when you're ungrateful, when you're unthankful, you want to be like, oh, you thought that was bad? <laughs> I can make it so much worse. <laughs> now I know I'm on you, right? It's good. So, um, but so being grateful and thankful. So this week, uh, Thursday, you know, it was a long week. We had stuff going like every day. Uh, Wednesday night, we finished up. Thursday, we went into Tutwiler Prison. That was our second time in the, in the prison. We took our whole worship team. Uh, we go in to uh, share uh, to share a word. There's a picture of us outside Tutwiler afterwards. Um, so that was our crew that went in. Um, thank you, welcome, for letting us use your trailer. That's awesome. We made sure that was in the picture right there because that, that helped us move all the equipment. All right, so we had to move all the equipment. Uh, we're getting really good at it because we tend to go to a lot of places now. We've been going to almost once a month going into different prisons, but we were welcomed back there. And I got to tell you, uh, this was probably the most powerful experience I've ever experienced. And to think that you can go into a prison where these ladies are literally, most of them are in there for 30 years, 20 years. You don't even know. But we're in, the, the prison's actually divided up into two sections. So you have the hardcore section where we're at, and then you have the, the, the section that, that they're less severe crimes, right? We ain't even been there yet. Both times we've been in, we've been in the, in the main one, right? Where you're talking to ladies and just, they just want prayer for their kids because they ain't going to see them for 20 years, right? And it doesn't stop the love of Jesus for those ladies. So we went in the first time not knowing what to expect, and it was really cool. Like we got in there, we're like, hey man, this is moving, this is fun. We were really excited. And I was like, man, that was really good. So we got back this time and they were, there was a line waiting to get into the sanctuary. And they came ready. They were ready to worship. They actually had a choir that they put together in just two weeks. And let me tell you, these ladies started off with a choir and they sang, we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. And the Holy Spirit just blew up in the place. And when you see these women that are so grateful and just worshiping, man, and they're in a place where it doesn't get any worse. Makes you think like, where, where's my heart? I'm not that grateful on a regular day when I'm sitting in my $50,000 RV and hanging out on the lake and, and I'm not that grateful. That's pretty sad. But man, they, they, they like bust out. And you're just like, whoo, what are we going to do? Well, you let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. And, and we just blew the roof off that place. And it didn't stop. We were blessed more than anybody else could be blessed. And in fact, at the end, they even called us to the middle and they all circled around the entire team and prayed for us. Like you, you go into a prison because you think you're helping. And these ladies are on fire. I mean, you, look, I'm, when I say it's, when we started praying for them, the only thing, and it's not that big of a sanctuary. It's smaller than this, or maybe lengthwise. If you turn this sideways, it's probably like that. And, and the stage had some steps. It wasn't a big stage. So I have to get up on the steps just so I can see over everybody as we're praying and everybody's laying hands on people and um, it just broke out. They said that it was going down the hallways. They said the place was just, so my thought process is, oh, this ain't even in this. So let's just keep talking. My thought process was, man, if we could have a breakout moment, if we could have the prisons start to worship till the walls come down, right? If we can start that, what kind of atmosphere does that create? So when these ladies show up there, they're walking into pure light. They're walking in instead of being fearful and going, I don't know what's going to happen. They're, getting, they're walking into radical change, transformation on the spot. That's what it was. These ladies are just on fire. 
right? It's just so, so good. And when I see that, I go, man, <laughs> I heard Damon say some stuff in one of his sermons and he was talking about, a, he said, uh, uh, there's multiple lists out there. And I, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but it just popped in my head. If you read the story about uh, uh, the, the king that wants to host a party and he invites all the rich people and all the people that are supposed to be there, nobody has time for him. Nobody has time for him. They said, I'm working. I got oxen. I got this. I got that. And they don't show up. So he says, man, well, go out and invite the people that um, are needy and hungry and all that stuff. So they made a second list of the people invited to the party. And they still didn't get enough with the second list. Then they made a third list of the blind and the people that couldn't move and the people that were just broken. And they filled the place with those people. And it changes the world. So I'm like, I'm so thankful there was a second list because I'm not a first lister. And I wasn't a second lister. I'm thankful there was a third list, Amen. right? So we're in the prisons and we're looking at these ladies that are just, man, they're so thankful. Like, just think about that for a second. That's not a good environment, but they're so thankful because of who he is. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the fact that we get to be part of that. And I'm like, you know what? Uh, if, if, the Lord says, build it up on those kind of people. We're going to build it up on those kind of people. And it might take a little bit longer, but I believe this sanctuary will be filled with people coming out of prison because that's what we're doing. And that's the ones I want. I want the hungry. I want the blind. I want the ones that have been locked up. I want the ones, man, that's who I want because they're hungry and they're passionate. They're being touched and lives are being changed. And that's impactful. You can't walk around these people without just, man, just wanting to glow with them. That's what I want. And that's what he's going to bring because we're investing in the right things. <laughs> we're investing in the right things, in the right places. You know how mad I was when God said, go to Millbrook? I ain't even lying, y'all. Like it was, we were a Prattville church. And when he moved us over here and he said, I put you in Millbrook for a reason. Get your eyes off Prattville, right? You remember this story? He said, he said, that's Lot's land. And when he told me that and he showed me a wall up on 65 and said, do not cross back over that line. I gave you this land. Yeah. You know how mad I was? You know how many connections we had in Prattville? Yeah. <laughs> we were doing stuff all the time with people. We were built in over there. Yeah. This was one of the largest churches in that area. So when he says, Millbrook, I'm going, are you crazy? <laughs> he goes, nope. <laughs> he goes, I, I know when you get into Elmore County, I'm going to show you where the prisons are at. <laughs> when you get your focus on the right things, I'm going to show you a people that are hungry and passionate and wanting to be part of something bigger. I'm going to show you people that want change in their life, that are anticipating that. So he goes, get over there and take care of the land. And when you take care of that land, I'll open doors. So we're going to take care of Millbrook. And I'm proud of it now. But I wasn't when he said it because I was like, oh, Lord, I don't know anybody in Millbrook. <laughs> so all we could do is go down into the park. <laughs> start. I'm like, I'm, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I said, we're going to go down in the park and love on people <laughs> and see what happens. So, oh, my gosh. So, yes. So I believe there's a... When I started seeing that gratefulness this weekend, it just changed my heart. And this, last night as I was sitting in the camper, um, which is hard enough because I'm not sitting in my back room in my house. It's my sanctuary thinking about what, Lord, what do you want? And he just said, man, just be grateful. And he kept reminding me of Tutwiler. So I said, you know what? We're going to talk about being grateful today. You're going to talk about being grateful because there's two things that can come out of your mouth. There can be praise and thanksgiving or there can be bitterness and anger, and you got a choice on what that is. And what you speak matters. What comes out of your mouth matters. That <laughs> We were just talking about that. In fact, what comes out of your mouth is the only thing the enemy knows. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> what comes out of your mouth is the only thing the enemy knows. You want to give them your game plan? Start talking about how bad your life is. Start talking about how bad your marriage is. Start talking about how bad your kids are. Start talking about all the stuff in your life that you don't like. Speak those words and watch what happens. There's power in that because the enemy can grab a hold of it. You don't say anything. He don't know nothing. 
That's why what comes out of your mouth should be praise and thanksgiving of who he is. He hears that and then he backs away and he's like, dang, <laughs> that person's on fire. I better leave him alone. I'm wasting my time. Mm. And I know some people that will never be grateful, but they'll be angry. Man, that's hard. So I'm going to share a story in the Bible. It's a, not as much about the healing that takes place. Uh, it's all really about the before and the after. Right? So we're going to open up our Bibles. We're going to go to Luke 17, 11 through 19. It'll be up on the screen if you don't have it. Luke 17, 11 through 19. And this is what he brought me last night. He said, let's talk about this. So I'm going to talk about it. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> We're going to talk about this for a second. Everybody there? All right, here we go. So this is Jesus. He's healing 10 lepers. That's what this is all about. It says, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus passed through the border region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered one village, 10 men approached him, but they kept their distance for they were lepers. So let's talk about that for a second. These 10 men, they're in a village. Because when you were a leper back then, if you go back in the Old Testament, it says that, that if you were a leper, you were going to be an outcast. You couldn't be around anybody. It was their way of quarantining people, right? And they said, so you can't be around anybody. You, you, you got to leave your family. You got to leave your friends. You're gone. So they would form these communities of people that were all sick, right? Well, Jesus is walking through the land. He's healing people. Word gets out when healing starts happening. Can I tell you that? Yeah. Word gets out. Yeah. When there's healing, there's some healing happening around this place. If you don't know that there's some healing happening in the welcome, in the welcome food, pan. I'm going to say it right. Welcome food pan. I'm going to say welcome because y'all know what it is. There's some healing happening over there. And guess what? When healing starts happening, people want to know what's going on, right? People want to know what's going on. So they know this guy. They said, man, there's Jesus is coming. So these 10 lepers, they see him coming and they honor him because they stay from a distance. So they know who he is. They're not trying to break the law, man. They're like, we're going to stand back and we're going to yell at him. So it says, as he entered the village, 10 men approached him, but they kept their distance for they were lepers. And I know they were sick, but man, could you imagine that just because of what's going on inside of you or around you or what you've done, people just cast you out. They just think you're not good enough and they isolate you. So imagine the thought process of these guys. 10 of them sitting there going, man, we ain't good for nothing. I ain't seen my family, nothing. They have nothing left. Man, it took me right back to the prison where they're sitting in the prison going, we know we messed up and we know there's consequences, but man, we serve a good papa and he loves us. So we're going to worship anyway, right? So, but these guys are going, we don't know what to do. We don't know what they're actually, they're actually hurting. They're actually sore. They actually have a disease. So they shouted to him, it says, mighty Lord, our wonderful master, won't you have mercy on us and heal us? Every time you see master in the Bible, most of the times it means teacher. That doesn't mean teacher in this version. That version of master doesn't mean teacher. That version means supernatural thing. I guess the best way to say it, when you look it up, it says supernatural. Where did I put that? Supernatural authority and power is what the, that master means. So they already knew who he was and what he was bringing to the table because he was healing people right? It's funny when you know there's healing, man, you're coming. Like you just want healing. So that's what that means in that one. So he says, won't you have mercy on us and heal us? And when Jesus stopped to look at them, he spoke these words, go to be examined by the Jewish priests. That's it. You walk up to the Messiah. He's healing everybody else. Most of the stories you read which are stories that they weren't obviously reading because they didn't have a Bible. And much more things than we see in the Bible were happening. That's what the Bible says. They said they couldn't even fit all the miracles in. So they know this guy's coming and he's fixing things. So in your mind, put that in perspective. You got a bad marriage, you're like, hey man, this guy's changing marriages, let's go. Right? You got a problem with your finances, he's probably doing something financially, let's go. Like you, you, you got a pain in your, in your neck, in your back, in your knee, you're missing a limb. You're like, let's go get this guy. Let's go. Right? So they're, they're coming. They're expecting him to do something absolutely amazing. They want to walk away with healing. And he goes, go talk to the priest. 
Well, that's a letdown. <laughs> that's not what we saw over there, man. You said you're healed, and they were healed. So what a letdown. So he says, go be examined by the Jewish priest. Now, this is a problem anyway because one of those 10 lepers was, was a Samaritan. He wasn't Jewish. They're like, well, this is what they call them, half-breeds. They're not good enough. But because you're a leper, we'll throw you in with the family because you got kicked out like we got kicked out. So that guy probably doesn't even have a priest to go to. It's funny that there's one Samaritan in all of those. Yeah. And it's funny that we're talking about 10 because 10 is completion, right? 10, 10, 10 is what they, so, but this is what we're dealing with here. So you got to read into what's going on. They're not all the same, but they all set off together. It says they all set off and they were healed while walking along the way. So they all went off together and they were healed. It says, I'll just come back to this. I'm going to read through it. One of them, a Samaritan, when he discovered that he was completely healed, turned back to find Jesus, shouting out joyous praises and glorifying God. When he found Jesus, he fell down at his feet and thanked him over and over, saying to him, you are the Messiah. So where are the other nine, Jesus asked. Weren't there 10 who were healed? They all refuse to return to give thanks and give glory to God except you, a foreigner from Samaria. Then Jesus said to the healed man lying at his feet, arise and go. It was your faith that brought you salvation and made you whole. So let's go back now. I'm going to go back to this. So they set off walking along the way. When Jesus wants to do something inside of you, that miracle you're asking for might not come just like that. It's going to take a little bit of obedience and a little bit of yes out of your mouth and out of your walk. Because Jesus healed them. They didn't know it. He told them to go. Why? Because you got to go to the priest because the priest is the one that determines you're not a leper anymore. The priest is the one that examines the lamb. <laughs> I'm just going to use lamb. But he's the one that examines and says, guess what? You're okay to go back to society. So Jesus says, Go to the priest. And they're thinking, oh my gosh, look at me. I'm still full of sores. I'm still like, all the priest is going to do is deny us and kick us back out. That's what they're thinking. But they have to go. They can't sit and question. They can't sit around and go, we're not healed yet. Jesus told them what to do. Go to the priest. So they had to start moving. You have to do something sometimes. There, there's an act of faith that has to come out of you to accept the miracle he's trying to give you. He goes, do you really think I'm Messiah? If so, you're going to do what I asked you to do. Am I truly your Lord? And if so, you're going to do what I asked you to do. And if you don't, you're not going to get the miracle. Think about that. Some of y'all calling him Lord, but you don't even do what he tells you to do. And he's like, well, I'm trying to help you, but you're not doing what I'm asking you to do. I Man, that's deep right there, right? I don't even need to dig into that. Y'all think it in your own head already. <laughs> You're like, oh, man, that's right. He said not to do that anymore. <laughs> right? And that's faith. That's operating out of faith. That's not earning his love. He loves you. He loves them. But he goes, now, if you want the miracle, you're going to have to do something. Like, just walk in what I'm asking you to do. Show me your faith. Faith without works is dead. So they set off and they were healed while walking, walking along the way. There's no time frame in there. You don't know how far they were going. You don't know how long it was going to take them to get there. They just had to walk. And it says along the way, they were like, hey, man, how you doing, man? I'm so, hey, I, I ain't sore no more. Like, what's going on? They're healed while they're walking out what he asked them to do. So they weren't healed on the spot, but they were healed after they started walking in faith. The healing came. And that's the funny part, because at that point, the one who calls him Messiah, the one that's a Samaritan, the one that is already cast out with the rest of the Jewish population is the one that turns around and says, you know what? I'm so cast out from everything else. You're the only one I know. So you're the only one I could go to. So forget the priest. I don't need someone to tell me I'm whole when you told me I'm whole. I don't need that. I'm going to turn around and go back to the one that made me whole and I'm going to feet and I'm going to praise him and I'm going to thank him and I'm going to give him everything I got. I'm going to pour it out at his feet because you're